Number 22. In the August 1992 space shuttle flight, only 250 meters of the conducting tether considered an example 23.2 could be let out. A 40 volt motional EMF was generated in the Earth's 5 times 10 to the minus 5th Tesla field while moving at 7.8 times 10 to the 3rd meters per second. What is the angle between the shuttle's velocity and the Earth's magnetic field, assuming the conductor is part? Okay, okay. So, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to use this formula. I'm going to make one adjustment to it, okay? And you can actually always use this formula uh, if you want instead of the formula over here on the right hand side. Um, that way, in case the angle changes, you're not kind of, you know, up shit's creek. So, by the way, have you seen that show? Great, great show. All right, so this is going to be, I'm rewriting the formula, and what we're going to add here is we're going to add to multiply by sine of theta. Now, theta will represent, this will be the angle between the velocity and the external magnetic field, okay? So the question here is asking, and by the way, you can always remember this formula and remember the relationship between this angle and the two items that I just told you, okay? So since the problem is asking the angle between the shuttle's velocity and the Earth's field, I know I'm basically solving this formula now for theta, okay? And if they don't mention anything about angle, by the way, in the problem, just assume the angle is 90, and the sine of 90 is going to be then 1. So it works out to be then a maximum value, all right? In other words, it cancels. So you can always use this formula. Now, um, I'm going to plug in everything that I know. Okay, so in other words, the emotional EMF that is induced, they told us is 40 volts, right? So we're going to do 40. The uh, magnetic field strength, they told us uh, the Earth's field is going to be 5 times 10 to the minus 5th. The length of the tether is going to be 250 meters. The velocity then of that tether was 7.8 times 10 to the 3rd meters per second. And now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be now solving this for my theta, right? Let's move this over a little bit. So that's then multiplied by sine of theta. So multiply this, then divide it on out into the 40, and let's clean this up a little bit. So it's basically going to be 40 divided by then parenthesis 5 times 10 to the minus 5th times 250 times then 7.8 times 10 to the 3rd. And this works out to be now 0 0.410 is equal to sine of theta. You got to take the inverse sign now, both sides. All right. So when you do that, it basically cancels the sign on the, on the, I'll leave the theta over here. It cancels the uh, sign on the right hand side. And now what you're going to do, take out your calculator. Please make sure you're in degree mode always, especially if you're taking like this with calculus. Okay. Or some other math class, you're going back and forth between radians and degrees. So you got to be careful. I mean, you can leave your answer in radians. That's fine. But you got to know that the answer is in radians, not in degrees. So do inverse sine, second sine of point, I'm going to put in that exact answer, point uh, 41025, blah, 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 blah. And what do we get? We get about 24.2, right? So there's about 24.2 degrees, all right? And that is then the answer. So that is the angle now between the, uh, the velocity and the magnetic uh, field. Um, if you were to multiply these three out and didn't include this at all, you would get a, a value higher than 40. And the reason why it's 40, it's less than the maximum, is because there's some angle relative to the velocity in the external magnetic field. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. That's all. And I will see you in the next video. All right. Have a great day.